welcome back to my channel. Today, oh, I'm so excited for today's video. We are testing out this palette right here. It's by Natasha Denona and it is their brand new Tropic palette. This palette came out maybe a month or so ago. And as soon as I saw the sneak peeks, I was like, I need that palette in my life. You guys already know I love Natasha Denona eyeshadows. I feel like everybody loves Natasha Denona eyeshadows. They are just some of the best shadows I think out there on the market. They are super creamy, super blendable, very little fallout, such a wide variety of finishes, everything from super, super titanium glittery mirror effect to these beautiful mattes that just blend like butter. They are so good, but they are so expensive. This palette retails for $129, which is not cheap at all. It's cheaper than some of their other palettes. They have, I'm sorry, I'm getting hair stuck in my mouth. Um, they have palettes that are a little bit larger for like $180 and then like really big ones for I think like $300. So it's not as pricey as it could be, but it's not cheap either. So I withheld from watching any reviews. I have no opinions on this palette because I don't know what anybody thinks of this palette. The only thing I will say is my sister and I went to Sephora this past weekend and we swatched the tester and I will say I was really underwhelmed with the tester. The thing with testers is you have to remember hundreds of people have stuck their greasy fingers in that pan and who knows if they had lotions or oils or makeup remover or other things on their hands that they got in that palette. And it was very swatched. It wasn't like it was brand new. It was a very swatched palette. So that's why I, I don't wanna hold my opinion based on that because who knows what was in that tester. This is a brand new palette. I haven't even touched it. I opened it and looked at it and that's all. So here's what the palette looks like. The packaging is this shiny kind of turquoisey blue. I love it. I love it so much. I am getting married in a tropical environment in the Caribbean and I'm all about this like tropical tropic things right now to help like prepare me for it. In fact, I was like this palette is going to be perfect for me to wear at the resort we're getting married at. So anyways, the packaging is much different from any other Natasha Denona that I have ever seen before. It's like this plastic package whereas all of their other palettes have this like leather binding where it's like um I mean yeah it might not be real leather maybe it's faux leather but have this like leather binding with this kind of heavy duty like I don't know magnetic closure that's how all of her palettes are so far this one is a plastic palette I am noticing right off the bat each of the pans of eyeshadow has a little hole behind it which means you can pop it out and put it in like a Z palette or something like that. So that's pretty dang cool. And then you open it up. Looks like there's still some sort of magnetic closure. Um, giant mirror, which is really good. There is no plastic sheet on top of it, which I'm indifferent about. I mean, all of her other palettes have this plastic sheet on top of it that protects the mirror. I don't typically use my palette mirrors. I use like a travel mirror, like this one in front of me right now, or like my vanity mirror. So I don't typically, but this is a really nice mirror. It is a really nice mirror. And then here is what the palette itself looks like. So it has a kind of magenta fuchsia outlining. And then all of the pans right here, there is three, six, nine, 12, 15 shadows, ranging from, again, mattes to satins to shimmers to like really, really heavy, like titanium finishes. So, so, so beautiful. I'll say what drew me to this palette right off the bat were these colors right here. They're kind of like rosy neutral mattes. Um, pretty unique to any palette that I've ever seen. They remind me a lot of the Anastasia Beverly Hills Modern Renaissance palette, if I'm being honest, but just different shades of those colors. I mean, you can get the perfect crease color. If you can't find a crease color in this palette, you're not going to be able to find a crease color in any palette because you have so many options to choose from. You have like your pinky nudes right here. Then you have more neutral to warm nudes right here. You have a peach color right here. You just have everything you need to kind of get that crease going, build up your eye look. And then you have some really fun colors down here. I mean, you have greens and blues and this purple which kind of reminds me of my shirt that I'm wearing and this blue right here you also have a yellow 
called Lemoncello. I've never seen a yellow eyeshadow quite like that before. It's just so incredibly beautiful, and the names are really funny. You have Fake Tan. I mean, it's just very appropriate for a tropical, you know, anyways. Sangria, Nudist. Uh, you got some really fun ones here. Exotic, Laguna, Tiger Lily, Xena, Lemoncello. So just really fun color names right here. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to swatch them all, put them on my arm, show you guys up close, and then we're going to put this on my eyeballs. So excited. Okay, digging in. Hmm, they feel very soft. Not quite as soft as some of her other palettes. Ooh, but that swatch though, still just as pigmented. But yeah, not quite as buttery. And this whole top row is all mattes. So usually her mattes are like stand out, amazing, you know. That's what makes Natasha Denona palettes, I think, so amazing is her mattes and those really intense like titanium glitters, I think are what make them stand out. Okay, so the order I swatched in was like this, then starting here like this, then starting here like this. So I'm going to start up on this corner right here and show you guys the swatches. I have some thoughts already. I feel like the mattes are a little bit patchy in swatch form. I mean, we don't wear eyeshadows swatched on our arms throughout the day. We wear eyeshadows in our eyes. So I think that's going to be the most telling part, but I will say like you can already see that some of these mattes are just a little bit on the patchy side, especially these more pigmented ones over here. But starting right here, Peach Puff is a beautiful peachy brown matte color. I feel like this would be so pretty as a crease color or even like a transition color. So, so, so pretty. Next to it is Sangria. This is a beautiful color, you guys. Colors like this just speak to me. I don't know what it is about colors like this, but I just really, really like it. It's Sangria is the perfect name for it. It is a Sangria color. Next to it is the color Fake Tan. Beautiful crease color, beautiful transition color. You can even build this up on like the outer corners of your eyes and do something like that. This color, I am so disappointed with this swatch. It's the color Coco and it is a matte. All of these are matte, by the way, except for the last one. And I just feel like the swatch was awful, but we'll see. Maybe I'll try to put that one on my eyes. Um, it is like a dark chocolate brown. Next to it is Sahara. And this one is kind of like a neutral, almost yellow brown. I feel like you would use one or the other in your crease right here. Um, you would either use Fake Tan or Sahara because they are very similar, but they are different as well. I like that they give you options. Next is the color Nudist. I feel like this would be a really pretty all over lid color, um, even like a highlight color if you used it very lightly. This was a matte, but it did swatch pretty dang well. Next to it is Vintage Taupe. I love colors like this, you guys. It's almost like a dusty, pinky, purpley, matte color. Um, I just love colors like this in my crease. Lots of crease options here. Next is Pastel Melon. This is going to be a really good all-over eye color, all-over lid color to kind of get everything started, set the base for your eye. That's a really pretty color for that. This next one is in the color... Goosty? I'll show you the pan because in the pan there is a bit of a shimmer in this one and Limoncello. I was really disappointed with both of these. They were not very pigmented. Um, they're still really pretty, but they're just, they're almost like a topper color. Like I feel like you're not going to see that on your eyelid. It's more like a put it on top of another eyeshadow. You know what I mean? Here is Lemoncello. You can see, I mean, I can't even tell that that was a yellow eyeshadow. It's just a little bit disappointing. I mean, it's a little bit more wearable than I was thinking it would be, but definitely like a topper color with a bit of a shimmer. This color is absolutely gorgeous. It's the color Mint Frost, super pigmented, super creamy. I think I'm really, really gonna like this color like on the lower lash line. It's just a super pretty kind of mint green color. Next to it is the color Exotic. This is just perfect for a Tropic palette. It's very resort, very summer, very laying by the beach. There is a bit of a shimmer to it. It's maybe more of like a satin, satin shadow, um, but it did swatch really well. These two, I am super disappointed. They're both matte. Starting with the blue right here, it's in the color Laguna. It's like this 
bright, like the color of the palette. It's like this turquoisey blue color. And it just, it did not swatch well. You could see it's very streaky, very patchy. I don't know how that would apply on eyes, but I don't know. Next to it is the color Tiger Lily, a beautiful, beautiful color, super pigmented and creamy. It's not quite as iridescent, sparkly as Mint Frost, but there is a bit of a sparkle to it. Um, I think it's just harder to see because it is a darker color shadow, but really pretty. And then the last color is Xena, and it is a matte lilac purple, again, a little bit on the patchy side. Okay, starting out with Pastel Melon, I'm gonna go in with a fluffy brush and just apply this all over my lid. Again, I think this is like the perfect all over lid, like transition, base. I think it's important to have colors like this because it gives your shadow something to cling to and it just makes everything blend a little bit better. I really wanna do something fun and like kind of out of the box, but Oh, I'm not very adventurous with my eyeshadows. Um, let's get a crease color going. And then I think I want to use this purple just because it kind of matches my shirt today. Mixed with... Maybe I'll do Tiger Lily, like on my lower lash line. I'll do something really different. Okay. I'm getting excited about this. I'm going to go into... Ooh, I'm going to go into Fake Tan first, which is this color right here. And then I might do vintage taupe on top of that. This color applies super well. Blends super duper well. Okay, now I'm going to go into Xena. And I'm super nervous about this because, for one, it's out of the box for me. Actually, before I go into Xena. Okay, now I'm going to go into Vintage Taupe, which is another kind of matte transition-y color. And I'm just going to put this a little bit more precisely in my crease and kind of drag it down to my lid a little bit. Just like this. This color seems to be a little bit less pigmented and I can't tell if it's because I'm putting it on top of another color or if it really is just a little bit less pigmented. This reminds me a lot of a shadow by Anastasia called Vintage Rose that I love. Is it Vintage Rose or is it Dusty Rose? Is it Dusty Mauve? I think it's Vintage Rose. Anyways, it's very similar to a color that I just use all the time. Okay, now I'm going to use the same brush, but I'm just going to like flip it over. And I'm going to go into Xena. And I'm really excited but really nervous because this color is out of the box for me. And the swatch was patchy, so I'm like a little bit worried about it. I'm going to put it all over the lid. Hmm. It actually applies to the eyelid pretty well. It is still a little bit on the patchy side. I think just this color is... You know, probably not the best color, but I'm going to put it on with my finger to really pack it on and get a more intense color. There we go. Then I'm going to go into Sangria. We're just going to use all the colors. <laughs> all the really weird colors. And tap this on the outer V of my eye. Sometimes I like to just tap it in and then go in with a bigger, fluffier brush blend it out. Sometimes that just works a lot better. Going in with a clean fluffy brush, I'm just going to blend everything together. For lower lash line, I'm going to go in with the pencil brush and Tiger Lily. I'm excited and really nervous about this. Make sure I'm not blurry. Okay. It is really, really pigmented, you guys. It applies super well. There is a tiny bit of fallout with Tiger Lily, but that's the only color I've had any fallout issues with so far, so pretty good. I'm going to take my Beauty Blender and just kind of clean up this line just a little bit. I didn't put any powder or anything down, but I really didn't need to. If it's just, if I wanted a straighter line, I should have, <laughs> but that's okay. 
Okay, I'm gonna pop on some lashes and top eyelid liner, and I might do a black, actually. Mm, I might do a nude in my waterline. Yeah, to like open up my eyes. Ooh. Mm, yeah. <laughs> and I'll be right back. So here is the final look, and I ended up going with like a beigey, slightly iridescent liner on my waterline and no liner on the top, just the lashes, and I happen to really, really like the way that this looks. I also really like these lashes. They're Lily lashes, and they are Havana, H-A-V-A-N-A, -A -A, Havana, and I just love it. They're like a little bit more fluffy on the outside. Hmm, these might be wedding lashes, I don't know. But overall, I really do love this palette. I think there's some unique colors in here. There's some comfortable matte transition colors. You can really get a fun, a bunch of fun looks out of this. You could get a neutral look with this color Cocoa, which I didn't use today. I really went out of the box today and I'm actually really, really liking the way it looks. So I definitely suggest this palette. I mean, it is high up there in price. You don't need the palette by any means. But if you're looking for a fun, high-end palette then this is definitely the way to go so I hope that you guys enjoyed this video let me know what your thoughts are on the palette if you've tried it or swatched it or anything like that down below also let me know if you've watched any other tutorials like should I check some out other people's thoughts let me know I know Glam Life Guru posted a video on it but I haven't watched it yet so we shall see but other than that thanks for watching and I'll talk to you next time bye